Our lesson tonight will be presented by our pastor, Pastor Brown. Hear ye him. We reverence God and thank him for the honor and privilege of being with you as we look at our preparation for April 24th. This is lesson eight in our series of study, and we are studying about freedom in the king. Freedom in the king, and this is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. In the King James Version, these are the words recorded for our lesson study. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Verse 34, Jesus answered them, verily, verily. I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Verse 35, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Verse 36, if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know, verse 37, that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. And finally, verse 38 in our study tonight, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which ye have seen with your father. Our key Never. verse is verse 36 says, if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. This lesson is Amen. focused on liberation. Uh, uh, the, the, the meaning of freedom here uh, carries with it the idea of being released from the control of the bonds, the binding. And what Jesus is dealing with here is more than just identifying what freedom is, but trying to identify, especially to these Abraham children, excuse the expression, these 
children of Abraham that they too need it to be set free. Amen. Because they didn't even realize that they were in bondage. This lesson uh, is again one of John's lessons that does not appear in the other gospels. It, it's it's uh, the, the, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic. They have a lot of the same thing in them. John's uh, gospel is different Amen. because John is really setting out to <laughs> validate, to prove, to identify that Jesus is not just a good man, Amen. Not just the son of a good man, but that Jesus is divine. Uh, Matthew set out to prove that Jesus was a Jew. Mark set out to prove that Jesus was a faithful and powerful servant. Luke set out to, free, to prove that Jesus was the redemption of Adam. He's the second Adam. And he brings with him as the first Adam brought condemnation, he brings liberation. John, which I call the fill-in gospel because it was written after all the other gospels, and he had an opportunity to peruse over their writings, and he comes to the conclusion that the most important thing is not that Jesus uh, came from Abraham, not that he was a powerful and uh, 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 strong and faithful servant, not just he came out of Adam to redeem us, but in the beginning was the word and the word was God and was with God and all things were made by him and without him, there was nothing made that was made. So Jesus is having what I consider here a very deep discussion with these children of Abraham, uh, these self-righteous because of who my foreparents are, but salvation and liberation that Jesus was talking about had nothing to do with whether or not you've ever been a slave, because we all been a slave Amen. to sin, to yes. sin. Yeah, we have. And even though we're slave, the sin pays wages. <laughs> All right. But the wages of sin is death. death. But the gift of God is life. eternal life. So Jesus sets out in these verses to validate, to prove that Jesus Christ uh, himself, he is God's representative. Let's go back. The, 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 the word and discipleship word and discipleship then said jesus to those jews which believed on him he's not talking to everybody to those jews that believed on him if you get this continue in my word mm. And there are some people start off good. They just can't continue. They, 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 they don't know that, that the race is not given to the swift. Not the strong, but it's given to those that endure. Yes, sir. Okay. Continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples indeed. So the focus of Jesus' teaching was on those Jews who had believed on him. Their belief was due in part to his pointed teaching, his miraculous healing acts. However, Jesus questioned whether they had true belief of he that sent me whom ye know not. Did, they, did their belief go no deeper than simple amazement at his miraculous healing acts? Yeah, yeah. In the verse before us, Jesus established the way to distinguish proper belief from improper belief. 
only those who continued in his word, only those who continued in his word were to be counted among his disciples indeed. Merely to be amazed at the respectful uh, uh, and be respectful of his miraculous acts and brilliant teachings was not enough. And there are some people that just like the excitement uh, of being a Christian. They like to see miracles. They like to hear a miraculous things that have happened. But what about the word? Amen. <laughs> the greatest thing you can take away from any experience with the Lord and with the church is the word. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The word will change your life. Experience will change your moment. Mm -hmm. But the word will change your life when that moment is over. The test of true and lasting belief was to be found in persistently following Jesus's words, following Jesus's teachings, and following his commandments. It's important for us to remember the Old Testament described Moses as Israel's teacher. Therefore, Jesus' opponents claim to be disciples of Moses. Their claim was appropriate. God spoke through Moses, so to be Moses' disciple was to be God's disciple. But now God had revealed himself more fully through Jesus. So to listen to the teachings of Jesus was to listen to God. And let the truth be told, they really didn't follow Moses. They were violators of the Mosaic law. They changed it. They added so much to it that you almost could not identify it from what God originally got, gave them. God said that he would hold Israel accountable for ignoring the teachings of his prophet Moses. To reject and ignore Jesus's word was the same as rejecting God's word. As a result, God would hold people accountable just as he did with ancient Israel. And Jude lifts up Israel in his example of the danger of not following the word of God. And, and God loved Israel. But God did not tolerate their continual rejection of his word, their continual decision to go in directions that were not in accord with his word. And so we are today great praises, great singers, great shouters. But when you get through with all of that, <laughs> are you continuing in his word? All right. All right. Now, you're not going to be judged about how high you shouted. <laughs> you're going to be judged by continuing in the word. If God punished Israel for not listening to Moses, how much more will he judge those who don't listen to the teachings of Jesus? <laughs> to continue, I heard Jesus say, implied the intimate knowledge disciples were to have of Jesus' teachings, they were to dwell on it and to dwell in it. Mama. The word of God is so important to us. Yeah. We don't need to be guessing and wondering for the Lord has made it so clear. The Greek translation behind the translation using the writings of John more than all other New Testament writers combined. It indicates closeness and association with Jesus and God and the fellowship of true disciples. They believe based on Jesus' teachings and in response, follow him. Such disciples would know his father. 
Jesus said, if you get close enough to me, you'll know the Father. Man. You've seen me. You've seen the Father. I am the express image mm. of his person, according to Hebrews. He is the Father revealed to us in flesh. But we have got to continue. And, and, and let me just say this to you. And we know people got all kind of excuses. Um, now, there's an expression. You all probably won't even know what I mean when I say it. But, but my daddy said he got more excuses than Carter got liver pills. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that expression? Well, if not, if you ever seen any Carter liver pills, they live bitty pills, live yeah, bitty pills uh, that people would take. And, and daddy said they got more excuses than Carter got liver pills. Yeah, and man. people are full of excuses. But let me say this to you. Uh, God, accountability measurement is continuing in his word. Man. Not even continuing in the worship. Hmm. But continuing in the word. And the worship is important because it reveals many times the closeness of the opportunity to be close to God and to be opportunity to be close to the people of God. Man. But continuing in his word is more important because there are a lot of people that bust them doors down every Sunday. And when they leave out of there, the word of God is not paramount in their mind. I know that's right, Doc. If the word is not paramount in their mind, chances are they are not going to continue in his word. So for some, an expression of freedom implies unrestrained pursuit. Verse 32 says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So the discussion on the nature of freedom led to different interpretations. And again, I'm back. Some, an expression of freedom implies unrestrained pursuit of personal desires. I'm free. I can go do what I want to do. I can, I can pursue personal desires. And I'm not, not that nobody's holding me back from it. For others, an expression of freedom may mean nothing more than the ability to refuse to submit to anyone. An attitude of defiance, if you will. However, these inter interpretations do not address the freedom that Jesus implied. The freedom to which Jesus alluded was an eternal, ooh, freedom. Not human expectations of earthly freedom. As disciples continued to follow Jesus' teachings, their knowledge of God's truth would expand. Old Testament scriptures describe truth in terms of God's faithfulness and salvation. God's gospel continued with this idea and applied truth to the person and the work of Jesus. Listen, he says, don't he, in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. As disciples remain in Jesus' teachings, they would know his truth. A life made free through salvation found only in Jesus Christ. That's why I real, when you've really been saved, you can sing, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No chains holding me. It's just a blessing. I'm free. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm free. And the Lord sets us free to be his servants and to follow his way. So how do believers react in this lesson, verse 33 says, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. Now, Jesus had reminded hearers that he was not of this world, 
but was instead from above. We have to go up a little bit to see all of that. Like I said, he reveals his divinity in many ways in this particular lesson. If you read the entire eighth chapter, he deals with things that uh, un unravels mm -hmm. the mystery of who he is. You know, they always ask him who he was and where he come from and by what authority. And in this eighth chapter, Jesus of John, Jesus sort of reveals some things. He, he, look, the people that asked the question didn't want to hear the answer. Amen. But they just used the questions to try to keep him off point. Amen. To try to distract him from his real ministry. And, and let me say this to you, and, and more and more, I'm, I'm identifying uh, what I call distractions. Hmm. They're really not about anything except getting you off point. Amen. Getting you away from the way you should be walking. And, and mm -hmm. some kind of distraction is somebody just making you angry. <laughs> they just get on your last reserve nerve. <laughs> and you're so angry, you can't function, you can't function in the faith. <laughs> I don't That's know if right. anybody ever been there or not. That's right, Doc. That's right. You can't function in the faith. It's just like Amen. It's just the words that want to come out of your mouth don't have nothing to do with, oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because, because he first <laughs> loved me. And you can get distracted enough by life and by people. And the devil don't care nothing about interrupting your peace, hey, and interrupting your thought patterns. In Hello. fact, it is his purpose to disrupt you, to keep you from getting closer to God. Yeah. He, Jesus hey. had reminded hearers that he was not of this world. Mm. When he tried teaching on heavenly things, his hearers often misunderstood his point. For example, yeah. Jesus taught that a person must be born again. Mm -hmm. And learned, train, leader, Nicodemus mm -hmm. was just as confused. <laughs> and Jesus asked him, uh, you a leader of the Jews? Mm. If you a leader and you can't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Then Jesus said, well, I can't help you to understand spiritual things because you're really not too clear on physical things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and let, me, let me move on. The, the, the Jews who answered Jesus fell prey to similar misunderstandings. They assumed Jesus was teaching about physical freedom. Amen. And the truth is, he really wasn't. Because when the Lord has set you free, you can be chained, muzzled, and locked away in a cave and still be free. I truly believe that. I, I believe that your physical position does not really reflect your spiritual freedom. Now, we all are bound by something. The declaration that we were never in bondage, uh, Jesus didn't really go on and address it like he could have because these, y'all excuse me for called Abraham children, had some temporary amnesia. <laughs> they forgot that the reason they esteem Moses so much is because when Moses came, they were in bondage. Mm -hmm. When he yeah. delivered them, he delivered them out of the bondage of Egypt. Yes, sir. And then they fell into bondage under false gods, apostasy, polytheistic ideologies, worshiping the Almighty God on Saturday and going to the feasts and festivals of the worship of Baal and others 
on other occasions. They were in bondage. And here's what they were in bondage to, sin. Amen. And you may not want to own up to it. Amen. But somebody may know what it means to be in bondage to sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. right. You have yeah. a heart and a mind to do right. Mm. Uh -huh. But because you are a in bondage, you said, I ain't going to do that no more. That is not the right thing to do. I apologize to God. And Lord, I'm through with that. I'm through. Amen. And in your immediate thinking, you are through. But then your master <laughs> that's got you in bondage mm. rises up. Amen. And, and y'all just leave my, let me use my imagination uh, uh, on this. And, and she called you. <laughs> 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 and you said, I'm through with her. I ain't going over there. <laughs> and then you get in yeah. your car and your car drives itself. Right on opening. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> because you're in bondage. But oh, it's wonderful when the Lord sets you free. They had been bondage on the Babylon. Mm -hmm. 586 BC. When the thundering hoofs of the, the army of Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonians for the first time broke through the walls of Jerusalem, something that nobody had ever been done, before, had been able to do. They were taken into bondage. So don't be selling about it. I ain't never been in the bondage. You probably in bondage right now if you out there saying that. <laughs> well, the Medes and Persians had hold of them too, didn't they? Thank you. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah, look. And even though Darius set them free, they were still under the control of Assyria. Amen, sir. Cyrus, really, and then Darius came along. So the narrative shares with us that they have been in freedom. So what they were trying to do, a lot of times when people don't want to hear the truth, they go to the line. Amen. Because they don't want to. Well, I don't do none of that stuff you're talking about. I'm just as saved as you. Amen. I ain't never been to church. Amen. You, you in bondage. You, yes, you in a mental bondage. Verse 33, uh, B say, how says thou ye shall be made free if we've never been prisoners? The Jews questioned Jesus, placing the burden of proof on him. Their question implied that they believe they were currently free, which disregarded their current status in the Roman Empire. They were in bondage on their own. Amen. They also failed to realize that Jesus was concerned with a different kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's that freedom we need. Jesus respond, sin and servitude, verse 34. See, Jesus said, Jesus answered them, verily, verily. I like that other, the other word, truly, truly. Um, the, it's the same expression, but it just, it's, well, verily, verily, I say unto you, who, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. So who is that whosoever? Who are well, the people that have committed sin? Everybody. <laughs> Maybe the other question is, who is the person that have a command? There you go. There you go. So Jesus God. said, we all yeah. are subject to the bondage. Jesus' response instantly upended the Jewish audience' faulty understanding of bondage and freedom. While they were concerned with an earthly sense of bondage, Jesus spoke of a more important form. Jesus applied the bondage metaphor to whosoever committed sin. Such a person was a servant to sin. The ironic aspect was that it was one's own sinful desires that bound a person. 
Therefore, to find freedom, people should seek to become servants of righteousness. Servants of righteousness. The apostle Peter warned against false promises of freedom that led people to become servants of corruption. That's 2 Peter 2.19. We ought to want to be servants of righteousness. We ought to pursue and desire righteousness for ourselves, and we ought to train and try to encourage others to seek the righteousness of God. Verse 35 says, and the servant abided in a house forever, but a servant not in the house forever, mm -hmm. but the son abideth ever. So Jesus continued his response to his Jewish audience through the use of the household metaphor. In a wealthy person's household, a servant would work for the master. Sometimes that servant would be the schoolmaster of the son of the master. However, even as a part of the house, a servant's presence was uncertain as he or she could be sold or set free at any time. By contrast, the master's firstborn son and heir received all the safety, security, and economic advantage of the household, no matter the situation. The son was considered a permanent member of the household and received the blessing of the inheritance of the future generations. Jesus pointed his hearers to find permanent freedom from sin. How do you get it? Permanent freedom from sin through the son of God. Amen. And the promise of his, his inheritance, because yeah, not only is he heir, Mm -hmm. let's, let's, not only is he heir, but those who continue in his word, those who embrace the son are going to be joint heirs with him, which means they're also going to continue as the son continues. Verse 36, if the son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free in thee. The title stressed son's deity even while he was on the earth as the son of God. Jesus is the source of eternal life. The son and the father are one and they give glory to each other. Jesus taught that only he can make people free from sin. The devil will never set you free from sin. I don't care what he promises you. He will never, he will never set you free from sin because the devil's agenda includes your bondage. Amen. With, Amen. with the proclamation in the verse before us, Jesus identified himself with the truth. The truth is going to set you free. Who would bring freedom from condemnation and from death. I know, Jesus said to them, verse 37, ye are Abraham's seeds, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. You can say you Abraham's seeds, but Abraham desired to see the son of God. Jesus confirmed his audience earlier assertion that they were Abraham's seed. However, a valid claim to Abraham lineage was not enough. Jesus would remind his audience that if ye were really, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. True children of Abraham follow in the faith of Abraham and Abraham was a friend with God and he desired to have relationship with God. So Jesus said, y'all say y'all Abraham's seed, but if I can use this, I don't see it. Hmm. Like some people say they are Christians. Hmm. 
and they outside the church trying to fight one another. <laughs> I don't see it. You don't uh, say anything. If you continue, mm. I can't get away from that, y'all. Mm. In my word, in my teachings, in my example of lifestyle, if you continue, then are you my disciples indeed. As a result, the people of God expanded beyond the scope of an, an ethnic identification with Abraham. Not only did Jesus' audience refuse to listen to his teachings, they conspired against him. This is not the first time Jesus acknowledged their desire in his audience. Previously, he asked the Jews at the temple courts, why go ye about to kill me? Abraham delighted in his relationship with God. I'm come to bring you in back into relationship with God. You claim to be children of Abraham. Abraham did not like that. Whatever God told him he had to do to be in relationship with him, he willingly did it. Yes, he is the father of the faithful. Finally, verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. J J Jesus draws the line here. He, he draws the line and said, uh, your father is not Abraham. Your, your father is the father of lies. Your, your father is Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, Abaddon, Apollyon. Your, your father is the destroyer. But if you are friends with God like Abraham was, then you would be a follower of the teaching. Jesus pronounced a contrast. On the one hand, Jesus' word gave witness to his heavenly father who sent him. On the other hand, Jesus observed that his audience was more concerned with what they have seen and heard from their father. And he identifies their father in John 8, 44 as the devil. My God. Listen, I'm going to read John 8, 44. Ye are, are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. My God. And the father okay. of my, my. Jesus' audience thought that their freedom was inevitable because of their ancestry. However, Jesus stated that they were deceived as long as they refused to listen and adhere to the teachings in, of Jesus, they would not experience true freedom. They would not know the heavenly father by failing to heed Jesus. The audience failed to listen to Jesus Christ. Jesus was concerned about freedom, liberation from the insidious grip of sin. Rome wasn't their greatest army enemy. You all have heard me say this before. The greatest enemy of the people of God in the days of Jesus and right now. Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't changed his posture. Mm. He hasn't changed his. He hasn't gotten any better. If anything, he done got worse. I'll tell you this. If you don't believe he done got worse, he done got bolder. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Don't they talk about stuff on TV you never dreamed you'd hear some, somebody yeah. talking about? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a program hardly mm -hmm. on television where there is not Sodom and Gomorrah reflected. Amen. Hey, you're right, man. 
Regular programming now. Regular. Every show. Mm -hmm. Somewhere or another in it. They, they, they almost twist the arms of the producers and the directors yep. and say, yep. you got to have this in it. They're trying to make immorality moral. Mm -hmm. They're trying to change wrong to right, and they're trying to ins insult right by saying that this is not how it has to be. Woo. You got alternative oh, yeah. families. You got alternative lifestyles. But I want you to know there's not an alternative hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's only one hell. Mm -hmm. and if you're not right with God, it is your destination. Jesus spoke truth because he spoke the words of his father. A declaration of true freedom. Freedom that comes from the father leads to eternal life. With the son. With the son. My, my, my. Yeah, that's our lesson. Freedom is found in the truth of Jesus. And he wants to set you free. Mm. He wants to set you free. Yeah, Lord. Will you be free? Amen. Will you be Praise free? The Lord. free. Mm. There's power in the blood. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's power. Mm. In the blood, mm. power, power yes, to make you free. Yes, Praise God. That's that's our lesson presentation Woo. for this Sunday, and we mm. praise God for the Word of God. Yeah, Lord, which is given for us. Abide in His Word. Amen. And that don't mean just got your Bible open all the time, driving with a Bible open. <laughs> that's not abiding in the word living. it's living action the word that's how you abide in the word so, brother superintendent that's it today that's what I have for our study and we praise God and certainly hope that this word will awaken somebody to mm. the necessity of abiding in the word of God Jesus kept trying to lead them back to the twelve, didn't he? Kept trying. Kept trying. They wouldn't buy it, but he kept trying. <laughs> kept trying. Mm. Yes, sir. And one, let me just say this. Most of the time, if you won't own up to the truth, it's hard for people to help you. Oh, yeah. Close fists. <laughs> Anybody know anything about psychology and about counseling? If you won't own up to the truths, if you won't own up to your truth, it won't help you, man. Chances are they can't help you. It won't help you. The greatest help you need is to know the truth. Amen. It'll set you free. Amen. When I look at my eyes,